This video is sponsored by LastPass. Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with what I think are the top five smartphones of the year. Of course, this is my personal list, but this doesn't mean that there aren't other great smartphones, but these are the phones that fit my needs the best. So typically that means a large vivid display, a large battery for excellent battery life, fantastic cameras on the front and back. I also want a great looking design that's made really well, the best specs and performance you can get on any smartphone today, and of course, a software experience that adds useful features and is regularly updated by the manufacturer. For a number five, I've chosen the iPhone XR. So although it's not my favorite phone of the year, it might be the most important just because it's also the best selling phone, at least according to Apple, which probably makes it the best selling phone in the US. iPhone XR is a little unusual for Apple because it's an all new design that slots below their flagship phones, but it's really designed to make their flagship iPhone 10 design more accessible at a 749 starting price. Although that's still quite expensive, it's $250 cheaper than the iPhone XS, even though it has the exact same A12 Bionic CPU, the same Face ID technology, and a very similar look to the iPhone XS with an edge-to-edge -edge screen that Apple calls the liquid retina display. So essentially that means we have an LCD screen instead of an OLED screen. iPhone XR has most of the same features of the XS, including stereo speakers, wireless charging, fast charging over the lightning connector. We also have a water resistance rating, although it's not quite as high as the iPhone XS. Although the XR has the exact same main wide angle camera of the XS and XS Max, it didn't pick up the telephoto lens. But thanks to the image processor and the focus pixels of the camera sensor, we still get most of the portrait effects available on the flagship phones. Some of those cost-cutting compromises actually come with some benefits. For example, we have the best battery life among all of the iPhones. And that's thanks to a thicker design which allows for a bigger battery life, but also a lower resolution screen, which means it's not pushing as many pixels. The XR also uses aluminum instead of stainless steel, which means we get a lot more vibrant color options than the iPhone XS. And although it's much cheaper than the iPhone XS, the screen is quite a bit bigger at 6.1 inches instead of 5.8 inches. The liquid retina display has many of the same features of the XS, so we have True Tone along with support for DC IP3, but it lacks force touch or 3D touch, so it cannot sense pressure. But we have long presses which do most of the same things. But besides the difference between OLED and LCD, the big difference here is the resolution. So we have a pixel density of 326. That's the same on the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8. That's quite a bit lower than the 458 PPI of the iPhone XS or XS Max. For the most part, this display looks fantastic. You can't tell the difference between this and other smartphones. The only time this really crops up is when you're looking at some text and it isn't quite as sharp as it is on the other flagship smartphones. For number four, I've chosen the OnePlus 6T. This is another instance where OnePlus has delivered one of the best values in the smartphone world, but also delivers one of the best phones, period, regardless of price. It happens to have one of the best looking designs on any smartphones, has a really high resolution display that goes almost edge to edge and one of the best looking notch designs among all of 2018 smartphones. And despite its low price, it delivers some of the best specs of any smartphones on my list. So we get up to eight gigs of RAM, the same Snapdragon 845 in the $1,000 smartphones on my list and some features that none of the other phones have, including an in-screen fingerprint reader. OnePlus also has the fastest wire charging solutions on any smartphones, but unfortunately no wireless charging. In fact, it's the only phone on my list without it. And the other aspect of the OnePlus 6T I really like is the software experience and the performance. OnePlus has always done a fantastic job in terms of software optimization on its hardware, so it's not too bloated and emphasizes speed and performance. So it always feels like the fastest phone I have. And OnePlus has done a pretty good job keeping their phones updated with the latest version of Android. Now, despite costing half the price of similar size flagship phones, this OLED display is one of my favorites on the list. It's nice and large at 6.41 inches, has a resolution of 1080 by 2340. That's good for 402 pixels per inch. So again, we have OLED, a larger screen and sharper resolution than the iPhone XR that costs quite a bit more. Besides wireless charging, the only other thing it's missing is a set of stereo speakers like the rest of the phones on my list. Otherwise at 549, this is an unbeatable value, especially when we start talking about my next phones. Before I get to my top three, I just want to talk about today's sponsor, LastPass. The first app I install on all of my new devices. One of the biggest challenges of using so many different devices is just keeping all those passwords synced together. 
So traditionally, every time I set up a new device, I had to manually enter the passwords for all of my accounts. But with LastPass installed, it will automatically remember my password and autofill them into every app or website. And because LastPass supports multiple platforms, I can use the exact same service on iOS and Android. Because LastPass remembers everything for you, it breaks some bad habits, such as writing your passwords down in an unsecure manner, or just using the exact same password on all of your accounts. So if one of them is compromised, they could potentially take that password to all of your other accounts. Instead, LastPass can generate strong individual passwords for each account. And the only thing you have to remember is your master password for LastPass, which you can also secure behind multi-factor authentication. So if you guys want to check out LastPass, I highly recommend it, and you'll find the link in the description below. Thanks again to LastPass for sponsoring this part of the video, so let's move on to my top three. So the rest of my list is basically a three-way tie. So the top three smartphones include the iPhone XS Max, the Galaxy Note 9, and the Google Pixel 3 XL. Now the reason they're a three-way tie is that they each have features that one of them is better at than the other, but they all in aggregate are fantastic smartphones that I can highly recommend to anybody. So first up, let's talk about the iPhone XS Max. This is the most expensive phone on my list, starting at 1099 and maxing out at 1449 if you want 512 gigs of storage. There is a smaller version, the iPhone XS, which is also cheaper at 999. It's basically the exact same phone as the XS Max, but the XS Max gets you a larger display and a bigger battery for better battery life. So obviously that's the phone I'm gonna pick here. Now personally, I think the iPhone XS Max is the best looking smartphone on this list. It's made of stainless steel, so it has a unique finish that the others don't have. But it's also the only phone that has a completely symmetrical bezel top to bottom. So besides a really thin bezel, the display pretty much goes edge to edge. But it also has the largest notch at the top, but that notch has one of the most impressive features of all of the phones on this list, and that's Face ID. Now I've been able to visualize how this works in real time thanks to an infrared camera. So you can actually see all of the infrared dots on your face and how it works. Of course, the True Depth camera is used for much more than just face unlock or authenticating passwords. We can also use it for things like emojis or memojis. Now, we've seen similar capabilities from other smartphones, at least in terms of unlocking your device. But not only is this more secure, but also works in more environments. So you can use this in pitch black or in direct sunlight. At 6.5 inches, this is the largest display of all the phones on my list. That's typically not something I get to say about an iPhone. So we have a resolution of 1242 by 2688 that delivers a pixel density of 458. So it's a really sharp Super AMOLED display with bright, vivid colors. It's not the brightest display on my list. It gets to about 600 nits, but the Note 9 goes to about 1000 nits. But it's noticeably brighter than the Pixel 3 XL. We also have a ton of other display technology. So this supports Dolby Vision and HDR10. We have the wide color spectrum of DCI-P3. We also have 3D touch, so we have pressure sensitivity and haptic feedback. And like other Apple devices, this is a true tone display, which is by far my favorite adaptive display technology on any phone. The XS Max also got a new set of stereo speakers, and they're definitely the best sounding speakers of all the phones on my list. So if speaker quality is important to you, I think the XS Max is the one to get. When it comes to performance, I think everybody knows by now that the A12 Bionic CP, which is a seven nanometer chip, is by far the most powerful chip you can get on a smartphone today. And of course, Apple does a great job optimizing its software for that chip. So this is by far the most powerful smartphone you can buy. But obviously, that's only important to you if it has the features you want. One of the most impressive new features of the iPhone XS camera is something called Smart HDR. It's new with this generation. Compared to iPhone 10, the biggest difference, especially during daylight images, is the dynamic range. So for example, the sky isn't blown out and we have less shadow. We also get better color reproduction production. So it makes a clear and immediate impact to the point I can tell the difference right away. Although I think it's debatable in terms of what phone has the best still camera, I think it's pretty clear to me at least that the iPhone XS Max has by far the best video camera. There's a ton of other nice features on the XS Max. Of course, we have wireless charging. We have IP68 water resistance. Even the antennas have been redesigned for gigabit LTE speeds. We get a quad LED true tone flash for the best LED flash I've ever tested. But more importantly, we also get a new set of microphones for the best audio pickup I've ever experienced on a smartphone. But of course, if you don't like Apple or iOS and want to take full advantage of Android and Google, 
there are two great options to take a look at. And first up is the Pixel 3 XL. So the Pixel 3 XL is the most affordable phone in my top three at $899 to start. But as always, the Pixel represents exactly what Google wants Android phones to be. So we get the most current version of Android, which is always the most important thing to me. And we also get a really good looking interface that's been highly optimized without a lot of extra bells and whistles. But unfortunately, this is definitely not the best looking phone on my list. At least I don't think it is. But I think that can be overstated because once you're using the device, you don't really mind some of the appearance issues. Actually, we have a pretty tall notch, but we have a lot of room on either side, which leaves plenty of room for the interface. Of course, we have the chin at the bottom, but it also comes with a front-facing stereo speaker. Although the speakers are loud and punchy, I'm not a huge fan of them just because I think they sound a little too muffled and a little too bass heavy. But if you want to listen to music and hear it clearly across the room, I think the Pixel 3 XL still might be your best option. Despite its somewhat awkward design, we still have a stunning 6.3-inch OLED display, resolution of 14. 40 by 2960. That's good for 523 pixels per inch. That's a really sharp display. That's actually the highest PPI of all the phones on my list. Although this is a great looking HDR display with support for DC IP3, it's not quite as bright as something like the iPhone XS Max and definitely not as bright as the Note 9. But where the Pixel 3 XL really stands out is in the camera. Although the 12.2 megapixel wide angle f1.8 aperture looks fairly basic next to the multi-camera designs we're used to seeing lately, it's Google's computational photography that makes all of the difference. Perhaps the most striking example of this is the night sight mode. It's literally the difference between night and day and something iPhone certainly can't do inside the camera app. It brings up detail you had no idea was in the image. And what's truly remarkable is the way it finds color in an image, especially when there's no light to begin with. Most long exposure modes tend to oversaturate, but Night Sight manages to preserve a natural color range, which is a big part of what makes these images so stunning. Beyond Night Sight, the Pixel 3 XL generally handles dynamic range better than any other smartphone I've seen. But there can be a little more inconsistency in terms of white balance and sharpness. Now the Galaxy Note 9 is one of the few phones that managed to escape 2018 without a notch. So that's definitely a good thing. So that means the Note 9 display isn't the largest one here at 6.4 inches. We get a resolution of 1440 by 2960. That's good for 516 PPI. That's second only to the Pixel 3 XL. But unlike the others, because we don't have a notch, that space is completely uninterrupted. And I think this is the best looking display among all of these smartphones on my list, although the differences are pretty small. So again, this is a super AMOLED display and one of its striking characteristics is how bright it gets. It can get up to 1000 nits. Because the Note 9 has a classic forehead and chin, it does look a little boxy compared to its competition. But it's still the only phone here with a curved edge to the display, which is still a really nice looking design. As always, Samsung delivers the most feature-packed smartphone you can get. Of course, we have the S Pen Stylus, which opens up a whole new type of interface that a lot of people really love. Typically, I don't use the S Pen that much, but when you use it, it's really handy. And for 2018, they've turned the S Pen into a remote controller for the Note 9 by adding a Bluetooth radio powered by a super capacitor that's recharged every time you reinstall it into the phone. The feature list on the Note 9 is really extensive and includes two things that the other phones don't have, which is a headphone jack and a micro SD card tray. But we also get some other familiar features like a fingerprint scanner and an iris scanner with face detection. But something that is a welcome change for the Note 9 is a set of stereo speakers. This fixes one of the biggest issues I've long had with Samsung phones, which was speaker quality. So they've dramatically improved it, although it's definitely not the best sounding stereo speakers here. So at $1,000 to start, this is the second most expensive phone on my list. And we have specs that keep up with that. So we have eight gigs of RAM and the Snapdragon 8 45, the same one that's basically in every other flagship smartphone. But the most important spec here is the 4,000 milliamp hour battery. That's by far the biggest of any of the phones I have on my list, which also means that the Note 9 has the best battery life of all smartphones I tested this year. In terms of software, Samsung definitely is on the extreme side of customization. There's a ton of Samsung features packed into the OS. But Samsung has done a great job optimizing the features to be useful and to run well on this hardware. So Samsung really does a great job maximizing the usefulness of this device, especially this large screen size and the S Pen stylus. In terms of camera hardware, the specs are somewhat similar to the iPhones. We have a dual camera setup with a telephoto lens. Both are also 12 megapixels with optical image stabilization. And the one thing that the Note 9 does extremely well is sharpness. Images come out extremely sharp, almost to the point it almost looks over sharpened. But the amount of detail you can get out of bright images on the Note 9 seems to be the best I've tested this year. 
Although we don't quite get the computational magic of the HDR modes on the iPhone or the Pixel 3 XL, color and dynamic range do look pretty good, but the Note 9 does tend to overexpose. Note 9 also does a great job in low light, bringing up a lot of color, but it does tend to over soften images to reduce noise. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed this look at my top five picks, but what I wanna know from you is what are your top five picks? So please let me know in the comment section below and I'll be there to take a look at them. Hope you guys stay tuned to the channel in 2019 and I'll see you again in my next video.